World Suicide Prevention Day is observed on September the 10th every year and aims to promote worldwide commitment to action that prevents suicide. The triennial theme since 2021 has been focused on creating hope through action. It's a reminder that there's always an alternative to suicide and aims to inspire light and confidence in us all. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the prevalence of suicide in the UK, appropriate terminology, and guidance on how to have a supportive conversation. Every year, there are over 5,000 registered deaths by suicide in the UK. And on average, 75% of that number are men aged between 45 and 54. In 10 out of the previous 11 years, London has had the lowest rate of suicide out of any region in England, with 6.6 .6 deaths per 100,000. Conversely, the highest rate has been in the Northeast, with 14.1 deaths per 100,000 as of 2021. Fear of saying the wrong thing, combined with a lack of awareness about appropriate terminologies when talking about mental health, presents a barrier to supportive conversations. The thoughts a person may have when they feel they can no longer continue to live are defined as suicidal thoughts or ideation. Regardless of whether the outcome is life or death, if a person prepares, plans, or acts on these thoughts, it's called suicidal behavior. It's also common for people to use the phrase committed suicide, which is a term that dates back to a time when attempting suicide was against the law. This is no longer appropriate as the law changed in 1961 and attempting suicide is no longer a crime in the UK. Warning signs for suicide include talking, writing, or otherwise expressing an intent to end life. This must be taken seriously and at face value, however casually it's being expressed. In addition, a person may present with a sudden recovery from depression, start tying up loose ends and getting their estate in order, all of which is relative to the behavioral baseline of the individual. For example, some of us are more organized than others. For those people, it may be completely normal to make amendments to their will or have regular catch-ups with their financial advisor. Risk factors for suicide include previous attempts, depression, excessive drinking, substance misuse, eating disorders, and acute life events such as bereavement or job loss. Two recent studies have also correlated higher levels of risk for offspring bereaved by suicide alongside individuals, particularly men, who experience loneliness or a lack of perceived emotional support. A common misconception is that by asking a person directly about suicidal ideation, it will increase the chances of them acting on those thoughts. It's actually much more likely to provide the individual with the platform they need to share their problems. A bit like being given permission to take a weight off their shoulders. Rapport is essential to having a person-centered conversation with the individual you want to help. At the same time, how we say things directly correlates to the type of response we receive from the other person. Your ability to project a genuine interest in understanding the other person's situation and the desire to improve it could be the difference between them feeling like they can open up and share the problem versus them withdrawing and keeping it to themselves. As a follow-up action, it may be appropriate to formulate a plan with that person that can act as a safety net for the next time they're experiencing suicidal thoughts or ideation. This could be as simple as a word or a phrase that the individual and their inner circle agree on, triggering safeguarding measures to be taken on the person's behalf. It's not uncommon for people to identify psychologically with the traumatic experiences of another following continued exposure. This is known as vicarious trauma. Take a moment to consider how you might feel after the conversation, alongside which coping strategies you have available to keep your stress container empty and prevent your own mental health from becoming a problem. If you or somebody you know is struggling to cope, Samaritans offer a free and confidential helpline where you can be connected to a volunteer at any one of their 200 branches UK-wide. You can also contact other sources of support, such as those listed on the NHS Help for Suicidal Thoughts webpage. Finally, if you think the person is at risk to themselves or others, call the emergency services. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Through a combination of training, supportive conversations, accurate signposting, and helpful coping strategies, we can limit risk factors, get better at spotting the warning signs, and connect the right people to the right help at the right time. For more information on how you can do this using mental health first aid, get in touch via info at letsgowellbeing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel to continue making the conversation about mental health in your workplace more accessible.